Welcome to GIX 911, where we give you the truth and facts that will get you results. Join your host, GIX, a former U.S. Army veteran, proudly serving his fellow brothers and sisters in arms with the information they need that will set them free. Join him as he goes into details on what you need to know before joining the U.S. military and what you need to know before exiting. Let's get this party started. Hello, everyone, and thanks again for tuning in to the Gix 911 show. I'm your host, Gix. And today I'm going to be talking about five things I learned growing up in the military. Okay, and this is going to be a very good show. Um, it's going to show other kids that are currently uh, growing up in a household with a military member that is in the service that you're not alone. Okay, and uh, I really feel it's going to touch a lot of people. And it's also going to help a lot of, uh, of, of service members that have kids that are home and and they're away from so very good show to come so the majority of american children will never see their parents wear a u.s military uniform most will never have to hug their mom or dad goodbye before deployment this is true most will never know the joy of seeing their parent or parents return home afterwards there are however many children who will know these experiences and feel all feeling all too well i was one of those children who had a parent serve in the u.s military Again, my father was in the Army on active duty for 26 years, people. I myself joined the Army after three, Army three years after he retired as a Sergeant Major. It was a very special moment in time for me to see my father serve for so many years, and I honored that with everything. Okay, I honored that. It, it was very special. He put everything he could put forward. He sacrificed so much. He provided for me and my family, or he provided for my my mother and my, my, my brother. He provided. He provided, and he looked out for us. My parents always encouraged me to be the best person that I can be, okay? I always looked at that old army saying, be all that you can be. I don't know if there's many of you out there that have heard that before, but that was the old army saying, okay? Now it's army of one, or I don't know, it might, might have changed, but back in the day, it was be all you can be. OK, and that's what he was and that's what he did. OK, and then I respect that. I respected that so much that I myself joined. OK, and uh, it was a very, very it was difficult. I have to say those years growing up in the military were very difficult. We moved a lot. We moved a lot. We moved about every two to three years. OK, and it, it was it was rough. It was rough. But you learn so much. You learn so much being a military brat. Um, I had to learn different ways of coping with situations that were very foreign to me due to my family having to move every two to three years because of, it was just, it, it, it's the nature of the beast, okay? My dad had to go where the military sent him, and uh, he did it, like again, with pride. He didn't complain. He didn't gripe. He knew he had a responsibility to take care of his family, and that's what he did. Uh, it was difficult for me because uh, I'm going to give you five reasons that posed uh, difficulties for me. The one was having to move to a different school. That, I think, was the hardest one out of them all. And that's why I'm putting it at number one. OK, having to move to a different school, having to find new friends. OK, in a new school and get caught up with coursework. Okay, it got very tiring and it was very tiresome and very difficult for me. Um, the things that made it much easier to cope with was knowing that there were other military brats or other kids that were going through the same thing that I was going through. So it made it a lot easier for me to cope with that of moving and going into another school. Uh, but it, it, it's very difficult. It is very difficult. And you have to put your mindset in a different place and understand why you are moving okay you have to understand it but that number one was a very difficult transition for me was moving to a different school uh, it, it played a lot of uh it, it caused a lot of issues for me because i had friends um that i grew up with you know or i knew especially my high school like um my high school i went to high school in uh upstate up north 
Okay, I went to high school up north and I was in that high school for three years. I was in a high school for three years. And when I had to leave, it was heart wrenching. It was very heart wrenching. Okay, because I had to leave and go to another state. And then when I got to this other state, I was only there for six months because my dad was in the academy. Okay. And uh, his academy was six months long. So I went to another school only to be at that school for six months. And I didn't even graduate. Okay. And the, and the requirements were different. So it was a setback for me. But I didn't gripe. I didn't complain. I took it with a grain of salt because I knew that my dad was sacrificing for us. So I did the best that I could in the school that I was at. Uh, and then, you know, it, it was hard. I'm living it right now, people. I'm living it. I'm reliving it right now because of how difficult it was for me. And from there, um, my dad got orders to another assignment. Can you believe that? Six months and then get orders again to go to some other state. So we ended up moving abroad. We ended up moving overseas to Europe. And I can tell you, I had an amazing time. It was an amazing time. It was an amazing time. I learned a lot. I learned to appreciate different customs uh, and people. And, and I became very appreciative of that. I knew my dad had a responsibility and a duty to uphold. So it wasn't hard for me to adjust because I've been through it before. I've been moving since the age of three. Okay. Since the age of three, I was moving everywhere with my parents and my family and my brother. And uh, I got used to it. I get used to it. It's harder when you are in high school or when you get to high school and middle school and so forth. It's a lot harder when you move because of the relationships that you develop while you were there at whatever place you were at. OK, but I, I took the experiences over that. And that's what I, I, I now today learned to appreciate. I learned to appreciate those experiences and I got to meet a lot of people from a lot of different walks of life. That made me appreciate who I, the things that I have and who I am. I'm not one to value money or material things because of the experiences that I had in my life. I'm not one to value those things because they don't give you, they don't get you anywhere. They don't get you anywhere. It's the experiences that get you where you need to go. Okay, so that was very a very uh, difficult time for me, but I ended up making it through. I graduated. And uh, I'm proud to say that I graduated in Europe, okay? And then I started college. So it is very difficult. And if you are a military brat, hang in there. Hang in there, okay? Because you will learn to appreciate later on your, you will learn to appreciate it later on in your life. Don't, don't blame your, your parent that is in and have them feeling a certain way. Don't, don't, don't make it a negative experience. Turn it into a positive experience, Okay? The second thing that I learned growing up in the military is uh, patience, okay? Patience. And learning that at an early time in my life uh, was very important, okay? You have to learn it. You have to learn it because you have no other choice but to learn patience. And patience will get you a long way in this life. Being patient will get you a long way, okay? Okay? There are many situations that I thought I would never, ever get through. But with the with patience, I was able to make it through. There are many times that I felt like quitting. But with patience, I didn't quit. There are many times where I felt alone. And I felt that I couldn't really reach out to anybody because I felt like I was in this environment by myself. But with patience, I made it through. And when I connected with other uh, military brats that were going through the, th the same things that I were going through and had the same mental thoughts that I had, I was able to get through it. Okay? So that's one thing in this world that you have to develop. And, it, and to, to develop it at an early age is even better. You have an advantage over a lot of people, a lot of advantages you have by having the patience. OK. The third thing that I learned growing up in the military. Was integrity. My dad, that's one of the army values, that's one of the seven army values is integrity. 
Integrity will take you a long way in this life. Being honest will take you a long way in this life. Okay? And integrity is very, very important. You learn it quick when you are a military brat. You learn it quickly. Because it's about pride. You have to take pride in the things that you do in this life. Okay? You have to take pride. You can't take advantage of people. And I've learned that at an early age. I've learned to do good and show integrity through the process. Because that's what it's about. That's what this life is about. Okay? Helping one another. Being there for one another. Encouraging one another. Leading one another. That's what this life's about. And the quicker you learn that, the better off you'll be later on down the road. It's very important, people. Very important. Because that's going to that's gonna distinguish your character and set you apart from a lot of things and a lot of people in this life. And that day when you're laying on that bed before you leave this earth, you can look back and say, I did everything that I could. And that's, that's the way I want to feel. That's where I want to be when my time is up. Okay? The fourth thing that I learned growing up in the military, and this is deep, people. This is deep. Is honor. Honor will take you above and beyond. Honor will take you outside of the realm of reality. When you honor the things or and appreciate the things that are put in front of you, you go places, you will go far. And that's another thing that I learned from my father is to honor. Honor the people that are there for you. Honor your family members. Okay? Honor the ones that have, have built you up to the person, man or woman that you are today. It is very important to have that as something that in your life, honor. And I take it, I take that and, I, and I'm, I've been going with it from day one. Honor will get you there quick, fast, in a hurry. And I and, and that's one of the that, those those two right there, integrity and honor. I took with me in the service. I took that with me in the service because I was taught that at a very early age. So I had already covered the values there. I had already covered some of the values there of and that's what made me a success when I went into the U.S. Army and prepared me for whatever they threw at me. Let me tell you a little story real quick. OK, I'm going to tell you guys a little story real quick and. This one, I think a lot of people may be able to relate to. I have to say military brats will be able to relate to because you'll see, you'll see if you are going in or if you're currently in, you can relate to this. And I, I would, I would highly, I would love for people to leave a comment on this. Okay. I would love for people to leave a comment on this. It's about when I was in basic training. Okay. And I remember when I signed up for the military. Okay. I signed up. Matter of fact, my dad gave me some handbooks with uh, different MOSs in it, okay? He gave me a handbook with different MOSs, and I looked through that book for about a good three or four days, okay? And at the time, I was going to college, and I really didn't feel like I was really establishing or achieving anything while in college. I felt that I was doing a major that really didn't mean anything to me because I didn't really feel like I can put add anything to it because it was just coursework. So... One day I came home and my dad was like, hey, you know, you got to make some changes. OK, and at the time I was in my late my mid 20s. OK, that's pretty late for going in the military. But he said, you have to make some changes. You have to make some changes. And um, I would suggest that you go in the military. And I looked at him and I was like, I was in I was just in shock. OK, I was just in shock. I was like, how could you want me to go in the military after you've been through all the things that you've been through? I mean, I, I appreciate everything that my father did, and I appreciated all the support that he provided along with my mother, but why would I want to go in the military, you know? I mean, I knew, I knew what to expect, and that was a good thing, but he encouraged me. 
So I went ahead and I went to school. I went to the college and I remember it like it was yesterday. I went up to my college and I dropped all the classes that following week. And I found a, two MOSs that I was interested in. And I went down to uh, to, re, to, re, to enlist in the military. And I was in my mid-20s, people. I was in my mid-20s. So that's pretty late in life to join the military. Okay. It's not late nowadays, but it's it's pretty late when I went in at that time to join. So I remember going down to uh, uh, to sign up. And um, the first MOS I, I, I wanted to get, they didn't want to give it to me because they said that that class or that uh, MOS was full. They had already met the requirements of the Army for that MOS. So the other MOS I had there, I said, well, what about this one? And they said, uh, you can't get that one. And I was like, why? And they said, well, because that one's full. So at that point, I, I was very, I felt very, you know, I felt discouraged because I didn't really want to do anything else. So I ended up calling my father, okay, and I told him that they will not give me this MOS that I wanted. So what he did, he ended up coming down to the recruiting station and talking to the staff sergeant that was there. Okay. And, and, and take in mind, my dad retired as a sergeant major. Okay. He did 26 years and retired as a sergeant major. So he was very respected. He had a lot of people. He knew a lot of people and was highly respected. So I remember him going in the back room with that staff sergeant and there was another uh, sergeant first class and he spoke with him for about five minutes. Okay came out of the room and looked at me and smiled and went and sat down on the, uh, in the visitor's area. And then the staff sergeant came back to me and said, hey, yeah, we have this one available for you. And I was just in shock. I was like, wow, what did he say to these people that turned this situation around for me? But anyway, to make a long story short, I ended up getting the MOS and I ended up going to basic training about four months later. And while I was at basic training, I knew... I did not want any of the drill sergeants to know that my father was prior service and especially didn't want them to know that my father was a sergeant major in the army. That was one thing that I was so fearful of them finding out. And I'll tell you the reasons why here in a second. I didn't want them to know. I did not want them to know because I felt if they, if they knew that my father was in the service, that the expectation would, would be raised exponentially. And I would not have a chance. And I was right. I was right. OK, I was right. So let me tell you what happened. So I ended up injuring my patella, which is the two tendons in your knees in the front. It, it actually goes across the top of the kneecap down and it attaches to your shin bone. So I ended up injuring that tendon severely in both legs. And I was in an excruciating amount of pain. I mean, so much pain. And I talked about this in my last uh, podcast where, you know, the reasons why people don't go to sick call and so forth. But I knew that I didn't want to bring that up. And I was in so much pain and I, and I was trying to mentally get it together. I was trying to mentally get my mind together to bypass the pain because I knew that I did not want the start, the drill sergeant to know about it because I knew that there would be some sort of uh, negative. Uh, you look at that negatively because he had high expectations of me because my father was a sergeant major in the army and I was put in leadership positions while in basic training. So anyway, I ended up giving in after the fourth day. I couldn't take the pain no more. I could barely bend my legs. They were in so much pain because of that tendon was so tight. And every time I bent my legs or tried to get it at 90 degrees, I would just hear this crunching noise. And it was so painful. The pain was excruciating. So I ended up Finally going to the drill sergeant and telling him that I wanted to go to sick call. And I remember I was in the the uh, the bay, the sleeping quarters of the bay. And I walked in and he was sitting at his desk. He got up and came out of the office and he says, uh, soldier, what do you need? What do you want? And I said, drill sergeant, I need to go to sick call. There was a long pause. There was a long pause. And he looked down at me looked at the paper that I had in my hand and he snatched it out of my hand, crumpled it up and threw it down the bay. Then he looked at me and said, you make me sick. And I left. I took my paper up, my, my, uh, the paper for sick call and I went to sick call. But that was a very hard time for me. And what got me through that, 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 that situation was the honor 
I honored my father and I knew that he had been through more. Okay, he had been through so much more than I had been through. And I just went through, I, I was in basic training at the time. But that kept me together. That kept me together. The honor. Because I, I, I honor, I honor the nation. I honor the, the country that I, that I live in. And I, and I, and I felt that I had, I didn't want to disappoint my peers, but I was in so much pain. So I ended up going to sick call. And, uh, it was, it was, it was, it was, I ended up healing from it, but that was something that I knew that I didn't want to put out there. Okay. Um, but I learned that that's, that's one of the things that I learned. I mean, I saw my dad go through certain things and he got through it. So I knew I was going to get through it. So that, that was just a little story that I wanted to kind of put out there. Um, and, and does correlate or it does relate to, you know, growing up in the military, because I knew that if I went to that drill sergeant and told him that I was in pain, I knew what was coming because he already knew that my father was in service and I already knew that he had higher expectations of me. So in the, in knowing that I knew that those things would happen, but I was able to get through it. So I don't know if there's any other military brats out there that have high ranking parents or a parent that is in the military. I, I know that you can probably relate to that because you don't want to be singled out and you don't want other soldiers to know that you're, family member was in the military or your immediate family was in the military because it, it, it does pose somewhat of an issue and they have an it, it, you looked on as and you should know you should know your father or your mother was you should know so that's the thing and I didn't know or have any kind of experience with basic training because that was my first time so but anyway um I just thought I'd share that and I, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people that can relate to that uh, military brats or, or kids that are currently in, uh, and their family member is serving. Uh, the fifth thing that I learned growing up in the military was respect. Okay. And that's going to take you a long way because when you're in, there's going to be times where that's going to really pull you through. Okay. You're going to have Sergeant first classes, you're going to have platoon sergeants, which is a sergeant first class. You're going to have people yelling in your face. You're going to have people just trying to break you down. But that's just the, the nature of the military. That's what that's what they do. They break you down before they build you back up. OK, that's just the nature of the beast. And that's so that you can develop a sense of discipline and be able to take orders and trust me, this is this is something that is beneficial. This is something that I, I feel a lot of the youth today, they're missing that. They don't know how to take orders. They're not disciplined. OK, and, and that's one of the um, the qualities that I think makes a successful person. If you have discipline, if you can respect people, you can go a long way because there's many times that somebody's going to tell you something. That may be derogatory or you may feel disrespected in some way. And if you just lose your cool. What I mean, what have you proved at that point? You know, and you definitely got to know it for the job because you, you're you going to have people that are going to be in your face or going to be telling you certain things. And you may not agree with it, but you have to learn how to respect that because you're not in the position of power to give your feedback. So. That's where you have to have that respect. OK, and it's very important. It's very important. And the quicker you learn that, the better off you're going to be in this life. Or if you go in the military, the better off you're going to be all altogether. OK. But I just thought, you know, I, I would put something like this together just to kind of reach out to all those military brats out there. And, and military members out there that are feeling it, okay? I traveled the world. I enjoyed it. I really, really enjoyed the travel. I had a wonderful time. I was in Hawaii, which was, which was awesome. There's a lot of people, a lot of kids that don't have an opportunity to, 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 to visit the places that I have visited. And I have a lot of respect for that. I have a lot of respect for that. That, that was something that I can cherish 
and look back. I could play it over in my mind over and over again and remember the times that I had going to different countries, going to different states within the U.S., traveling the world and seeing the world for what it is. And at the end of the day, people, everyone is alike in this world. It's, it's amazing. Yes, there is a language barrier here and there, but overall, we are all the same. We are all the same. So, I mean, it's, 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 it's a wonderful thing, people. It's a wonderful thing. And, and growing up in the military, don't, don't, feel, dis, don't feel bad about it because I know there's a lot of, of, of kids out there, especially nowadays with all the, the things that are going on, all the wars that we have been in in the last two decades. You know, it, it's, it's, it's a very depressing uh, uh, setting to be in for a lot of these military brats or these kids. Okay, and it's very depressing for the parents as well that are in the military. So, but overall, you know, the experiences are are what are important, positive or negative, because it's going to make you into a stronger person. It's going to make you into a stronger person. So, uh, yeah, uh, that's that's how I feel about it. That's how I feel about it. And 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 I hope that anyone that is listening to this podcast can relate can relate i hope there's some relation and and i, I would, like i said i would really appreciate some feedback i would really appreciate some feedback because i don't know if maybe 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 i'm the only one that has this thought i'm pretty sure i'm not but you know it would be nice to 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 see other people that are thinking along the same guideline that i'm thinking along you know and we all have different experiences everyone's going to experience it differently but at the end of the day, it's what you do with that experience that is important. It's what you do with that experience. And again, my parents have been amazing. They have been an amazing support factor in my life and in my kid's life. And I've been humbled. I've been humbled like you do not have. You, like I've been humbled like you not believe. You would not believe how humbled I've, I've gotten And I would never tell any of my kids not to join the military because I believe that you can learn a lot. You can learn a lot and it's going to be very productive. It's going to be very productive because at that point you will have an appreciation there. So in closing, those are the five things that I learned growing up in the military. It, it, it's and there's more, there's more. But those are the main ones that really push me forward. And set me up for success in this life. Yeah. So I hope you guys are enjoying the information that I'm providing. Um, I hope that um, we can all, you know, I hope that I get some comments here and, 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 and see where this is going. Because I really don't know where it's going, to be honest with you. But I know I'm speaking from my heart. I know I'm speaking from my heart and I'm, I'm giving you what it is raw and uncut. So I would really appreciate some feedback because that's really important to me to see where I'm heading or where I'm going with this information and to see if it's affecting anybody or if it's getting to anybody and having somewhat of an effect on them. But anyway, I want to go ahead and um, cut this one short. I don't know what short is, but uh, I'm really happy that I'm able to. I'm, I've, been able, I've been given the opportunity to put this together, and uh, it means a lot to me. So uh, anyway, let me go ahead and close this one down. And uh, if you like what you heard today, please follow us on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Apple iTunes. And uh, all the above. Anything that I have in my description, check us out and uh, go from there. So uh, peace, love, and harmony in 2019 and beyond. This is Gix911. I'm your host, Gix, and I'm out. Peace. Loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, personal courage. Do you have what it takes to serve with the best 
Tune in and get the information you have been searching for all over the web. Do you have questions on how to file a VA claim? What you should know while you're serving in the U.S. military? Or just want to know about the lifestyle? Tune in to get the real deal. 